John here guys. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're out here in the field and I'm testing a concept I've been thinking about a little bit lately. And that is what I started on when I started flying five inch. That was several years ago. I've been flying FB since about 2016, but five inch since about 2017. And at that time, the size motors we were running were about 2206, much, much smaller than the stuff and the KVs were overall lower. So the interesting thing I've been thinking about is we started on something that was much less powered. And as we got more powerful motors, 2306, 2207, 2208, we keep bumping the KV up, we keep pumping the power up, we are reducing the weight, um, and we have beginners start where we are instead of started where we started. This is a lot less powerful quad. I built it up with an iFlight 20 by 20 stack, 2206 motors, an FR Sky receiver, all old school. It's analog. I'm putting a 1300 6S battery on there. If it was back to those days, this would technically be 4S, but I'm using a low KV. This is an Emacs 2206 1700 KV, which compares much more to like the 2206 2300-ish we would have been running back then. So let's see how this performs. Does it feel underpowered? Should we have beginners start on something like this that they can control better? Because it's like we don't give a teenager a Ferrari to go learn to drive on. We give them a Toyota Camry that's like 20 years old, right? So that's the same concept here. Let's get it going. Now this is an analog quad, but I am using the DJI goggles. And that's because I want the DVR out of here. And the DVR in the DJI goggles is so much better than the DVR in Fat Sharks, even the new HDO2s, that it's like, for me, the best analog goggles are also DJI. Go figure. I'm also going to be recording this on the trusty Runcam 5 4K, so we'll have some footage for you there too. Let's check it out and make some notes as we fly. This is analog, this is the Runcam Nano 2, but it actually looks pretty good in these lighting conditions. You know, it's not bad at all. Um, I can't see like a ton of the ghost branches. Let's do like a quick, let's do a little loop over this thing. And I can feel the lack of power. Like I'm punching around I can definitely feel the lack of power compared to what I'm used to flying, but it's still enough juice to get me over those things. Let's go over this tree. You know, it's just a little bit underpowered compared to what I'm used to, but it's not really that terrible. It's still got plenty of speed. And when you do have just slightly underpowered, not massively underpowered, you actually get some nice control and precision back. I think that's why a lot of those freestyle pilots um, like Ladrib prefer to fly an overweight quad because you do get some of that precision back uh, because you have a little more mass there. So this is actually verifiable. I like how just cruising, I can go like some gentle cruising speeds if I'm going around here. This would be really nice for a beginner to learn on uh, ooh, ghost branches. Uh, let's do some flippy floppies. There I am. Let's go over this tree. Whoa, the tune's a little weird. I don't know if it's the wind right now, but it's like blowing around. I wonder if I forgot to put like air mode on here or something. As soon as I like let off the throttle, it gets a little wonky. But that's probably my tune, not the quad itself. I don't think the wind's that terrible. If I stay on the throttle as I'm doing the moves, I do maintain control. So I must have left air mode off. No problem. We were used to not having air mode when I first started flying, so I can totally fly like that. No problem at all. Let's do a little punch. Whoa. So this is actually pretty nice. You know, if I was gonna build a first build, 
you could build modern day motors, put a throttle cut on there to get the same feel. But if you find some of these older ones, see when you put a throttle cut, you gotta figure out like, do I wanna put an actual cut? Do I wanna put a throttle scale? Do I do it in beta flight? Do I do it on the radio? And they all do kind of the same thing, but slightly different. This really just reduces your power across the entire range. Sometimes when you put a throttle cut, it cuts the top off but your bottom is still really, really punchy. And that's what people kind of don't want when they're, when they're learning. You want to be able to have control in the middle stick range because people have not really mastered that fine stick movement. Ooh, I think battery's starting to get a little juicy. I did forget to move the OSD elements, so I can't really see them. I'm starting to feel some sag, so it's time to bring it in. Yeah, on this 1550, I can definitely feel the weight of that battery but I still have enough juice to make it comfortably over these lights right here. And look how smooth the transition is from like punch to dive. Can get really nice and close there. I think I bumped my camera angle a little bit, so now I'm going a little bit faster, but that's okay. Let's just go over this. I mean, look how smooth you can get and uh, these are just like some generic motors. These motors are actually a few years old. I've had them sitting for a while, didn't know what to do with them. And then I just thought of this project, went through my box of gear and found this. They're still like brand new. And so it's like, wow, let's get some use out of them. You know, this is very punchy still. It's just like a little bit less. The thing is with a lightweight setup like this, with a session style, I know this is not the session, it's the Runcam 5 but that gives you a fairly low weight so you can get away with a small motor man the control is just really fun and let's just do like one of those uh trickster things what is it called where you do like a flip and then you do like a roll and then you do like a backflip. i don't know is that like a it's not a rubik's cube it's like some kind of a brain teaser puzzle i don't know what it's called Guys, I don't really stay up to date on the tricks. Whoa. Uh oh, crash time. Okay, so I'd say that was pretty much a success. These smaller 2206 motors really do give you a lot of control. Now you can have control with big motors too, but what it also does that I like was that it makes everything a little bit less sensitive down in the lower ranges of the throttle, which is where most beginners are gonna have a lot of issues. They don't have that muscle memory, that fine stick control developed yet. So, should you build up a quad like this, if you can find the parts, I'll put you a full build list below. Um, this should cost you around 150 ish dollars, give or take about 10 or 15, depending on what you can find. And, but should you pick that over something like a Roma or an iFly Nazgul? If you can find one of those for a good price, just put a throttle cut and you'll be just as good. But if you do want to do your own build, you may want to skip the giant motors for the second time around. Thanks, guys.